in 1644. The Ming collapsed when his emperor Chong Zhen hung himself. Luck propelled Li Zicheng to power. Wu Sangui surrendered and recanted. The Manchus were kept in dark about all this, thanks to the unsurpassable Shanghai Pass. In the same year of 1644, the Qing state north of the Great Wall entered a new era. Five months after Huang Taiji died, his six-year-old son Xun Zhi became the second King Emperor. But he was too young to govern. His ambitious uncle Dorgan thus usurped the power. <laughs> On April 7th, days before the Ming Empire fell, Shenzhen, the current Qing capital city in the north, held a huge rally. The Manchus learned Beijing was under an imminent threat from Li Zicheng. Urged by Dorgan, the Qing decided to take the chance to enter China properly. The Isingyoro clan had covered its central China since Nurhaci's days. Opportunity finally came. Dorgan mobilized all the Qing forces on April 9th. Historians estimated the expedition involved at least 140,000 out of the 200,000 troops, far outnumbering any of the previous Manchu battle against the Ming Empire. Over the past 30 years, The banners were organized in three levels. One Niru had 300 households, one Jalan, five Nirus, one banner, five Jalans. Several hundred scattered Nirus were thus brought together, and Khan commanded all eight banners. The strict but flexible hierarchical system facilitated unified governance. In 1616, Nurhatsu unified the Georgian groups in the northeast. 
He founded the later Jin Dynasty in Shenzhen and started vying for equal status with the Ming administration. By the time Nur Hatsi died in the seemingly endless war against the Ming in 1626, he had already laid the groundwork for the rise of the later Jin Dynasty. But he died regretting that his eight banner cavalry couldn't conquer the Great Wall. But unexpectedly, Huang Taiji died in 1643 at the age of 52. He didn't get the opportunity to unify China, which was accomplished by his brother Dorgan. Fortune pushed Dorgan to take the center stage of history. On April 9, 1644, he set out with more than 100,000 troops from Shenzhen. It was one of the most important expeditions of the Qing Dynasty. On April 13th, they reached the Liao River, where he learned about the fall of Beijing. Li Zicheng conquered Beijing sooner than expected. Dorgan had been to the hinterland. He was familiar with the strategic places all the way from Datong, Xianhua to Jiyong Pass. He also knew that Beijing had towering and solid city walls. But how could the city fall within just a few days? The situation changed far beyond he had imagined. Two days later, more surprising news reached him. Led by Prince Regent Dorgan, more than 100,000 Qing troops marched towards Beijing in 1644. Unexpectedly, Beijing fell into the hands of Li Zicheng without resistance. Was the doubtful letter truly for military assistance? Grasp the transient opportunity or just give it up? How would Dorgan win the war? Who would dominate in 1644? It's an unprecedented year in Chinese history. Fight or flee. Do or die. The rule of a falling empire faced his end. How would a grassroots hero steer the fate of a dynasty? Was the formidable general anger for the sake of the beauty? Was Manchu's triumph accidental?
who steer the course of history. Three power groups fought toe to toe for domination. What was behind the transition from the Ming to Qing dynasties? 1644. This day, Dorgan surprisingly received a letter from his old rival, Wu Sangui. The Ming's Liaodong garrison chief asked the Qing for military support to help him fight against Li Zicheng, who wanted to avenge his emperor Chongzhen's death. In March 1644, Chongzheng committed suicide in despair. Wu Sangui was ready to swear allegiance to the new regime, only to find that the woman he loved was taken by the number two man of the regime on his way to surrender. He captured the Shanghai Pass and vowed to revenge. The situation changed swiftly, but the information about what happened in Beijing could not get beyond Shanghai Pass. So Dorgan didn't know what happened between Wu and the new regime in Beijing. Holding the letter asking for his military assistance, Dorgan hesitated. Then Even Hong Cheng Chou couldn't figure out who was real in Tashin. The former Ming army chief in Liaodong was captured and defected in the Songshan battle. He was once the superior of Wu Sangui and knew Wu very well. The amity between the Ming and the Qing had lasted for three generations. It was natural for Dorkin to doubt Wu's sudden request to be his ally. Huang Taiji tried many times to win Wu's loyalty, but in vain. Was the request a trap? It was indeed a rare opportunity to enter central China, but the doubts held Dorkin.
Historical opportunities often slip away in the wink of an eye. It's Dorgan's prompt decision that sees the rare chance in a twinkling. His father and brothers had struggled for over 30 years for the opportunity to unify China. Sunni 不要就是说白了就是不让清军直接和他接触不要就是说白了就是不让清军不让清军直接进入三三关进北京因为三关是吴三桂的大本营他万一清军入关后呢把他三桂夺了那么吴三桂真正就没有地方可以去可以去住可
Three power groups fought toe-to-toe -to -toe for domination. What was behind the transition from the Ming to Qing dynasties? 1644. But surprisingly, Dorgan finally chose the route via Shanghai Pass rather than Zhongxie or Xixie, as he originally planned, or as suggested by Wu Sangui. The changing situation bewildered Dorgan. But before long, he realized the importance of winning time to a victory. The longer the routes, the less time.没有按照吴三桂实施路线选举他采取断言措施我也不走细节不走我就直接直奔山关来了这是非常非常的英明的实验书呢在这之前呢多尔衮没有像皇太极那样重视山海关这个位置但是山海关的重要性他同样知道所
He felt blessed to have changed the plan to head directly for Shanghai Pass. His father and brother struggled for years, but failed to approach the Grand Pass. But it was now in sight. However, Dorgan was in no hurry to get through. He ordered his troops to encamp outside Shanghai Pass. He was waiting for Wu Sangui to realize he had to negotiate. Wu Sangui was in a very dangerous place, but he had not yet given up the history of the Qing Empire. So he was still very concerned to ask the Qing Empire. 这个援助他，帮助他消灭这个农民军。多尔衮也很聪明，把降不降清哈作为我出不出兵条件，就是在表明清朝对他的招降之意。多尔衮也是步步的往前进逼。As expected, Wu Sangui's envoy visited Dorgan eight times that night, urging Dorgan to engage in the battle against the Shun army as soon as possible. Dorgan reiterated that his troops came at the request of Wu Sangui, but he didn't say when he would engage in the battle. Wu's army suffered heavy casualties on the first day of the battle. Without reinforcement, his whole army would be annihilated. The decisive Dorgan made up his mind. No surrender, no reinforcement. This fire can be burned. It's an unprecedented year in Chinese history. Fight or flee. Do or die. The ruler of a falling empire faced his end. How would a grassroots hero steer the fate of a dynasty? Lust the formidable general anger for the sake of the beauty? Was Manchu's triumph accidental? Who steer the course of history? Three power groups fought toe to toe for domination. What was behind the transition from the Ming to Qing dynasties? 1644. Under the threat of the Shun army, Wu Sangui had no choice but to surrender to the Qing regime. Meanwhile, Dorgan only needed to wait for daybreak. By then, Wu would have no way out, throw away his illusions, and surrender. So, through the changes of development, so gradually, the way, Dorgan changed the political landscape. So, the opposite of Wu Zhangguo, 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 the opposite of Wu Zhangguo. So, slowly to go, slowly to go, slowly to go, slowly to go, slowly to go. The game played out in Dorgan's favor. Early on April 22nd, Wu Sangui surrendered to the Qing and Dorgan's tent. Bing Rui, Qing Wang, Wu Sangui, Qing Dian. In the morning, 
the mighty Qing forces got through Shanghai Pass on two routes. The gate of the pass was open for Dorgan for the first time. Later, he took command and completed deployment and ordered Wu to lead the Vanguard cavalry to rush into the enemy. Gobi 他的这个属下曾经说过这样的话the fierce battle lasted until noon. Without reinforcement, Wu's army was encircled. With the command from Dorgan, the waiting eight banner cavalry hit out from the right flank. Li Zicheng's exotic forces were routed. The Battle of Shanghai Pass was over with the disastrous defeat of the Shun army. Li Zicheng fled to Beijing in haste. As the vanguard heading the attack, Wu Sangui's army was decimated. Dorgan waited and profited the most. He was the biggest winner. Qingjinde In wisdom, Dorgan seized a fleeting opportunity in 1644. Fortune smiles on brave men. In the special we 
这是这是毫无疑问的，就是领袖的责任。没有哪个力量都形成不了最终的结局。这么些个合力作用，最后形成的结果，就是说这个关键人物那么起了很重要的这个作用。没有李自成，把这个明朝呢就是灭亡了，就先攻进了北京城。那么这个清军的入关呢，可能呢还有晚些时候。那么在最最早的时候，如果没有这个呃，从呃这个努尔哈赤皇太极不断的对明朝的东北部的这种这个这个多次的发生一些战争的这种冲突的话，那么这个时候呢，这个西部的农民军的问题呢，可能呢也没有那么难解决。那么这个过程当中说，说每个人在关键的时候做出了自己的这个这个呃对事情的呃判断或者选择，那么导致了事情。的最终的结局，这就是历史上合力作用或者平行四边形的一个原理的作用。Full of overlapping and convoluted variables. Zhong Zhen, Li Zicheng, Dorgan, and Wu Sangui made breathtaking choices in a era of swift changes. The Qing Dynasty captured the Forbidden City. The dream of Nur Hatsu and Huang Taiji finally came true. China experienced a new round of integration between nomadic and agricultural groups as its history took a new turn. In May 1644, Dorgan spent the rest of his life suffering from illness. After the battle for Shanghai Pass, overwork ruined his health. In autumn 1649, he was thrown off a horse while hunting. One year later, he died during a chilly winter. He was only 39. But less than 100 days after his death, young Emperor Shunzhi launched a probe into his past and convicted him of treason. All his property was confiscated and his tomb was destroyed. 
His remains were also burned. His royal title was revoked, and his remaining family was banished. The hero could hardly have expected such a fate. Wu Sangui continued fighting after beating Li Zicheng. He joined in the crackdown on peasant rebels and remnant Ming troops. He also helped conquer Shanxi, Sichuan, Yunnan, and Guizhou. Wu became the most valiant general in the campaign of the Qing Empire to unify China. As time went on, Wu Sangui aged, but time didn't forgive the old man. Once taking power, Emperor Kangxi wanted to get rid of Wu Sangui, now the Prince of Pingxi. The Emperor issued an edict to deprive him of his title. Wu rose up in arms again, but he was no longer young. Wu Sangui died in 1678 at 67.